In this latest uh, part of our video series on technical analysis and trading, we're going to take a look at Bollinger Bands, uh, how they're constructed and how to use them to try and identify trades in a whole host of different financial markets. Hello, I'm David Jones and this is the, the latest video with Trading 212 in our technical analysis course. Um, we've had quite a few requests in the comments in recent weeks for Bollinger Bands, so just to prove that we do read the comments, uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, this time around. There may be, it's, it's quite maybe a complicated indicator for some, but it breaks down to uh, a moving average, which we have covered before, uh, and some bands, some volatility bands around that. So first of all, let's explain the theory. So we'll start right from the basics and look at the theory, uh, how these things are constructed and what they're actually showing us uh, what's going on in the market that we're looking at. So let's go slowly through uh, the idea of Bollinger Bands. So it was developed by uh, a man called John Bollinger. So no prizes in guessing where the name comes from. Uh, and what we have, we have a moving average, first of all, and we will we'll do moving averages again in a bit more detail, but we have covered them before. Um, so let's say we have a 20 day moving average that looks like that. So based off what the price is doing. And then we have two trading bands placed around the moving average. And um, so these are the Bollinger Bands. So we'll draw this, we'll show this on a real market in a minute, but just to get the theory uh, down. So these Bollinger Bands are typically placed two standard deviations away, uh, above and below the moving average, which is typically, I think, a 20-day moving average. And the idea of using this statistical concept of standard deviations is describing how prices are dispersed around an average value. You know, clearly the average is the average, and two standard deviations is designed to ensure that 95% of the price data will fall between these two trading bands. So as a rule, one way of using this, if the, if the market price, let me just change the color. If the So there's our moving average in blue. If the market price ends up at the upper end of uh, the Bollinger Band. We could say it's maybe overextended and we're expecting the market to sell off and maybe move back to the lower end of the Bollinger Band. So that's, that's one way of doing it. People will also use it as targets, you know, if they're buying down here near the, the lower end uh, or the, the lower Bollinger, they might be looking for the market to roll back up and test the other end the other Bollinger Band above that moving average, okay? But the, the basic concept is we have a moving average and then Bollinger Bands are bands that are just two standard deviations away. Now, because they're based on price volatility, they won't stay a constant difference from the moving average. If volatility drops, the Bollinger Bands will get tighter, you know, because they're looking at what the price has done over the last 20 days. If volatility, so if market movements get bigger, if we see bigger swings, the Bollinger Bands will widen. So Bollinger Bands will expand and contract based on what's been happening with the last 20 days volatility. So some people would think when the bands are quite far apart at an extreme, then the current trend may be ending. When they are alternatively, when the bands has narrowed too far, market volatility is really low, maybe we're about to have an explosive move. So there we go, that's the theory behind uh, Bollinger Bands. As usual, uh, the theory is one thing, how it works in the real world can often be uh, something different. So let's take a look at a couple of real markets uh, with these Bollinger Bands overlaid on the chart. Let's take a look at Euro Dollar as our sample market. Let's start with a clean, clean chart. So just candlesticks, daily candlesticks. We'll add the Bollinger Bands in. So we access from here, from indicators. We click down. So there are various uh, splits for the indicators. You can access Bollinger Bands from most popular or otherwise you can go into volatility and they're in there. So let's click on Bollinger Bands. So we've got the default settings here. 20 day moving average, two standard deviations, and that's it. Click on confirm. There are our Bollinger Bands. Let's just walk through some of this. So clearly the candlesticks are showing the price of Euro dollar. 
the yellow line here, that's our 20 day moving average. And then either side of this, we do of course have our Bollinger Bands. And you can see, let's jump back to here, June of last year. You can see the Euro, Euro dollar had gone pretty sideways. The Bollinger Bands had narrowed. You can see here that they're closing in on that, uh, that moving average. Okay, so we've got a period of low volatility bands have narrowed, expectation is we could get a big move when volatility increases. But you can see the Bollinger Bands did a good job of providing support here. So if we're buying down here and maybe targeting a move up to the upper extreme, volatility picks up. We really see uh, Euro dollar start to move. So as volatility picks up, because this is based on volatility, two standard deviations away, we've got our Bollinger Bands starting to widen. Market goes quiet a bit, narrows, and so it goes on. So these are the bands, and the, the idea is that they should capture 95% of the price movement. That's why we've got these two standard deviations. So if you're looking at this now, you could argue Euro dollar has slipped below that 20 day moving average, and we have come down to, to almost test the lower Bollinger Band. So maybe one approach here would be to look to be a buyer because we're at the we're at the lower extreme. We've also got good support from back here on Euro Dollar at 122.05, so about 90 points away from where it's trading now, and looking for the market to maybe rotate back up to the 125 area. But that's how they look on the real chart. And you know, just again to recap, you see them widen at times of increased volatility in the market. And if we go back to here, you can see them narrowing in the run up to Christmas 2017 as volatility dropped off. Here's a quick example on, on the S&P, the S&P 500, the broader US stock market index, just so you can see the impact that volatility has. You know, we have been in relatively low volatility environment for, for US stock markets. We just see them grind their way higher all the time. And then of course, uh, beginning of February, we saw a real explosion. Markets fell off a cliff. So you can see just, just how far the Bollinger Bands uh, then go out, you know, picking up on that massive increase in volatility. Look at them here, you know, how far they are here from 28.79 through to what, 25.65. So more than 300 points apart. And then if we go back here, 25.55 to about 2600, only 50 points apart. So they really are a function of how volatile the market is being. So again, if we see volatility calm down, we will see these lines draw back in towards the moving average. And one trade at the moment, the S&P 500 is in the middle. It's right on that 20 day moving average. If we sold off back down here to the lower band, some people might use that as an opportunity to buy, looking for the market to rotate back up. And of course, the flip side applies if we saw the market rally back up to the top here towards the, the upper Bollinger Band. We'd be looking for maybe the sellers to come back in and the market to push back down. But I think this is a great example of how their volatility based. Volatility exploded, so the Bollinger Bands got knocked really wide apart. Hopefully you can see there the impact that, that volatility has. You know, on that last chart we looked at, the S&P, you know, if you follow markets, you know the last few weeks we have seen this massive jump in volatility for stock markets. And you can see how, how the Bollinger Bands uh, got knocked out. If we see volatility drop back, those bands will come back together and we'll have maybe uh, more normal trading. Personally, it's not something I look at all the time. There are so many technical indicators out there these days. You, know, you could look at 100 different indicators uh, before actually deciding whether uh, to buy or sell, but maybe it's something that will fit uh, with your particular style. And of course, next time around, um, we'll look at another approach to markets. As usual, we'll start wrapping things up there, but if you have any questions or comments or something you wanna see covered in the future, just leave us a message in those comments uh, down below. If you like the video, click on the thumbs up and to never miss out on the content, uh, we upload during the week. We do a whole load of stuff. We look at the Euro, gold, oil, cryptocurrencies, uh, so various videos throughout the week. Just make sure you're subscribed by clicking the subscribe button there. And if you click the alarm bell notification icon that's um, down there somewhere, you'll get automatically notified every time we upload a new video. But for this week from me, David Jones and Trading212, we'll leave it there and I hope you have a good trading week.